Very good morning, great to have you join us right here on Sports Republic. Welcome. It's a new day, I could say compliment of the season. Uh, we have a whole lot in store for you today. But then, don't forget a very big award is the African Cup of Nations, the 34th edition of its kind, and it's every course to bring in all the African countries together as one. On the show, we'll be talking, dissecting, analyzing, going inside of it, the nitty gritty, everything you need to know about the African Cup of Nations, we've got in store for you. So don't go anywhere. I am Kizi K. And... All right, good morning. Uh, great to have you guys here. So much to talk about in the side of the sport. I hope you're excited about it. I'm very discussion. okay. I'm very, very, I'm very happy, 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 happy to be back. So, Jerry, it's a whole lot, right? Yes. But well, you're looking very nice, by the way. You're, you're looking sharp. Uh, looking you need sharp. to you can say that again. So, yeah, let's get on the business right now. Welcome to the show. So, we start with the local news, the MPFL, where Aqua United returned to winning ways. It was an exciting round of matches in the Nigerian Premier Football League in the match day 17, as Lobby Stars of Macaulay recorded their second a way win of the season against Krawa United. Yeah, quite an interesting uh, run of games so far as far as the Nigerian professional football league is concerned. And of course, the uh, two first half goals uh, by Samuel Tiza and Stanley uh, or Gabo was all the uh, years father boys did as they called them needed to end an impressive result against uh, Coach Kaviru Dogo's side. Mm. And of course, in Eketz, the struggling Aqua United returned to winning ways with a comfortable 3-1 win. Uh, over Abia Warriors and the promise keepers came to a goal down uh, to claim the maximum points under the caretaker coach talking about Umar Abdullah. As course, if that was not enough. Yeah. Also, we did see that also defending champions the Inba International Football Club condemned Sporting Lagos to the relegation zone with a 2-0 victory while Kano Pillars got the better of play to United in the 2-1 win uh, back in Kano. Also, moving on tabletop at Rainbow Stars, left it late to beat Sunshine Stars 2-0 in Southwest Derby in Kenya while Rivers United held Gombe United to a 1-1 draw. Yeah, reinstated uh, Christian Obi of Heartland FC, continued uh, his winningless and run in the league after his side lost 2-3 uh, mm. uh, to Niger Tenedos in Cardinal. And, right. all the, and all the results, we see Doma United 2, Castle United nil, and uh, Shooting Stars 1 by say United nil, Bende Insurance 2, Rangers International and new. Okay, so that's just an update we need to give to you on the, you know, our talk about the local league, the MPFL, the Nigerian Premier Football League, all of those results you had us see uh, just what it is. But well, quickly away from that, look, I we told you we were a lot to serve you on the show uh, this morning. Let's go there, uh, you know, I could say we're traveling to Ivory Coast. Let's yeah. go to Ivory Coast right now, talk Let's about this, everyone. Spirit, yeah. uh, but uh, before we get on the story, do you have a favorite country? Let me get on this, Jerry. Yeah, any competition as far as the competition is concerned as, as big as the African Cup of Nations, right. the biggest football competition on the continent of Africa, the largest, uh, even if I will not say the, the, the best continent mm. in the world, where you have the best of the best as far as footballers <laughs> is concerned. All right. And uh, definitely you have to put Egypt amongst the favorites. There's mm. also the Algerians, not to push away the Cameroonians. Right. Uh, Egypt and Cameroon share the sports. Mm -hmm. And of course, it used to be Ghana before right. those. Ghana has lost the touch. Then we can put the Super Eagles, who sometimes, most times, surprises or after being tagged. It, it right. doesn't sound like you sound convinced about the Super Eagles. Are you not convinced about that? Are we not yeah, cool enough? Well, what we've seen in the past, since last we won it in 2013, what have we seen so far? We've right. seen a lot of issues, not getting the coaching right, and that is why the Super Eagles have not been able to dominate on the continent. Okay, so taking it to the African Cup of Nations, Morocco have become the first side outside a host nation to arrive in Côte d'Ivoire for the CAF. African Cup of Nations AFCON 2023. The Atlas Lions landed in Abidjan on Sunday. The FIFA World Cup semi finalists landed at the Felix Omufet Bogni Airport in the afternoon and made a warm welcome. The plane carrying boats, the manager, talk about Walid Dragi's side, landed in Abidjan at 2 p.m. local time. Uh, before they were received by Terminal 2 with a colorful cultural ceremony arranged by the local organizing committee LOC at the AFCON and tight security. Members of the Moroccan community Abidjan were also present at the airport to welcome their team. Recall that the Outlast Lions are drawn in the Group F alongside DR Congo, Tanzania and also Zambia. And as semi-finalists in 22 World Cup in Qatar, Morocco is seen as one of the favorites to win the AFCON in Côte d'Ivoire. So on the show, we will be talking a lot about the African Cup of Nations and on the show with us, we are not just alone, not just me and Jerry right here. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole lot of people, a little bit of person in, in the building. So we are three of us and the next man, we have him here. You're welcome. Good morning, and uh, thanks for having me. Mm. Um, Ike Chiku Johnson is my name. Okay, Ike Chiku Johnson, let's get to talking ways. Jerry, let me hold you on this quickly now. Well, you talked about countryside that are favorite. You didn't mention Nigeria. Why? You don't want to be patriotic. Why? 
No, uh, the thing is that the Super Eagles will always be favorites. As far will as always be. Yes. Oh, Anytime okay. there's a condition like the African Cup of Nations, just because they have the talents who are making waves. Of course, the current African footballer of the year is uh, Victor Simen. So definitely, you will have to look at his team as one of the favorites as far as the competition is concerned. And if you take a look at the Super Eagles, we have one of the best attacks in, the, in, in Africa mm. right now. We have one of the best strikers in the world in Victor Simen. Right. We have the likes of uh, Boniface, who is destroying and tearing apart the German Bundesliga mm. with, with reckless abandon. We have Luke Mann, Moses Simon, who's doing well in the French right. League on. And if you have this kind of players, definitely you don't want to push them aside. At the last half, we did very well in the group mm. stage. Everybody already tipping the Super Eagles to go all the way out. But what happened? The North Africans and, of course, Maduka Okoye struck. We know the rest is history. <laughs> right, but <laughs> we're still looking at what's That sounds funny, happen. crazy one. Yeah, let's go. Let's right. see what will happen this time. Every time we're this favorite. But at the end of the day, when it comes to really putting in the work, making it count at the end of the day, the Super Eagles are always found wanted. And I hope that will not be the case this time. Okay, around. so we'll go straight to our guest on the show, Ike Chuku Johnson. Ike Chuku, you're welcome again. Um, let's get on the part where Morocco happened to be the early Morocco, also not just Morocco, we did see, uh, you know, Guinea as well, coming very early. And would you say Morocco side, while Edu Gragi, the manager, respects a lot, do you see them as favorite? Absolutely. Um, if you look at what happened at the last World Cup, you understand that uh, clearly they've shown that they are not just the best team in Africa, mm. but they are also the top five teams in the world. Okay. And um, do you, you, we also how they, they played, you know, powerhouse like uh, um, Portugal, what they did, mm -hmm. and, you know, how they even conducted themselves against France, even though they lost that game. Mm. I, I think Africa has really come of age, but talking about African football and how prepared they are, I think they are the most prepared side. Forget about any other uh, country. Is, and is it the World Cup? Is that a yastic? I, I think you have to judge a country by the, the, you know, by the way they played in the last tournament. And when was the last World Cup played? Mm. And what is the pedigree of Af other African nations right, that's true. You know, compared to them? How do you judge these things? The best way we can look at is how far they, they did in the last major tournament, which is the World Cup. Mm. And then if you cannot, and mo the bulk of the players that played that, that tournament are still very much in, in the team. Nigeria is getting you know, one team today and tomorrow we are get, we're having another team. Other countries are still uh, struggling to put themselves together. That's why I was saying, you know, uh, off air the other time that mm. one thing we need to really understand in, in the western part of Africa is that these North Af uh, Africans understand how to keep themselves. They are very cons conservative in their style of play. They understand that the culture of the North African has to be pres preserved, just like the Europeans. And that's why they're both dominating football across the world. What, if, 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 if everything continues the way it's been going, mm. I bet you in the next couple of World Cup, we'll be seeing North Africans and the European teams in the semi-final. <laughs> Trust me, you know why? Why? Africans and South Americans are having their own style of play diluted. Africans and South Americans are moving to Europe. You know, they're losing their culture. Now, if you go back a couple of years back, between 2010 and say, let's say early 90s, I don't want to go back, back, back. Mm -hmm. You understand that the West Africans are very powerful when it comes to the Nations Cup. Our, our style of play is preserved. When we went to the World Cup, West, uh, West Africans were the very first set of people who shocked the world. Mm -hmm. the, the Cameroonians, how they did, you know, how they, how they uh, outclassed the... The, the, uh, the No, no, the, 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 the Argentine uh, national side. No, okay, 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 so like, yes, so these are the things. Because we kept our style of play, we approached the game like West Africans. But now we all want to play like Europeans. So much threat from, so much threat sounding from you. So much threat for the North African side. Yeah, the North African side have proven to be teams who come with a lot of flair. They're oh, never flair. tired. I love the word flair, yeah. that's true. They're never tired. They're tactically gifted. And they have the bit of consistency mm. because they have a league that is working. Because if you take a look at the CAF Champions League, CAF Convention Club, they've continued to dominate. And they're getting it right. The thing is that any continent or any country, I beg your pardon, that wants to do in competitions like the African Cup of Nations and, of course, the World Cup, need to have a working league. Morocco is benefiting from the fact that they have a working league. Okay. And the policy of assimilation between France and Morocco, where mm. most of their players also get the opportunity to play in the French league, even graduate from there and become world beaters. You have the likes of Atraf Hakimi, for instance. Very fantastic player. He has played in the big, in the big sides and, of mm. course, doing well in PSG. Right. And, of course, uh, these are players that knows their onions. And, of course, let's not forget Hakim Tiek, fantastic yeah. player. Tiech. And, of course, Bono. They are mm. goalkeeper, fantastic goalkeeper. He's been doing well for himself as well. And um, Amrabat, sorry that he didn't do well. He has not been At doing well in Manchester United. United. 
but he knows what to do in that team. So there's a bit of consistency mm. in the North African side. There's no also rural out of Jira. We admire it and cool. Right. They also bring a lot to the table. So the North African side, they are really dangerous. And they have this kind of European style of play mm. that creates a lot of problems for a lot of West African sides who want to play them. So if you have to say now with what you've said so far, would you what's how would you say their favorite in quotes, Algeria, Tunisia, the Egyptian side, the Moroccan side? Everybody knows Morocco is one of the most deadliest, if not the deadliest. Yeah, and of course it brings a lot of pressure on the Moroccan side. They want to replicate what they did at the World Cup. And if they don't, if, if they are not careful, they'll go into games against minor side and begin to fumble. We've seen that happen to defending champions. Mm -hmm. We've seen France go to the World Cup. We saw what happened to them against Senegal. I hope that will not be the case of Morocco in terms of having too much confidence going mm. into games. They should know that this is a different ball game entirely. The World Cup is over. This is the African Cup of Nations. They need to still prove themselves that they are ready to conquer Africa before everybody give. You know, African people, they don't, they don't respect you whether you are, you are, because all these players are also mm. exposed, no matter how small the teams are. Okay, so everybody knows the Moroccan side, a very quality team. The manager from the onset, everybody knows about Lidri Gragi, what is brought on the table. The kind of player they possess, the Yasin Bono, the Onrani, the Sofian Amrabat, El Nassiri, quality team, Atitiala, and all of this name. But let's quickly get off that one and talk about the friendly game where Super Eagles beat local Dubai team. 12 nil in a practice match, it was called. The Super Eagles triumph over a local Dubai team with an impressive, I could say an emphatic win, in at least a test held in Abu Dhabi training base on Sunday, played behind closed doors. The Super Eagles, who are preparing for the 23 African Cup Nation, recorded 12 nil win. Joseph Pesero side established a commanding 6 0 lead at halftime by Ademola Lukman scoring four goals, while Victor Sime contributed with a pair of the goals. Yeah, Moses Simon, quite a fantastic player with his second half substitute, uh, made a uh, notable impact by scoring twice along with Mara Sadiq. Additionally, Ojo Oloroleke saved the penalty in the second half, further solidifying the Super Eagles' dominance while the opponents considered two own goals. All right, mm. The Super Eagles are set to face Guinea in another test game scheduled at the Bani Yard Stadium, which is later today. Okay, so looking at the scoreline, what is it? 12 nil. Yeah. Let's come on on you with Kechuku now, quickly. 12 nil. I don't celebrate this kind of a win. You played against a local side, I mean, just... I don't want to use the word second chair in court. Is this a yastic for us? Are we ready to go for the Nations Cup? Well, um, I, I think every game is important. Every okay. game is important when it comes to build up to a tournament. Okay. So uh, these are the these these are games the coaches use to test tactics, test um, you know players' fitness and mm -hmm. all that or or, or or whatnot. But yeah, if you want to say you don't celebrate these kind of things, it, it depends. You know right. because um, just imagine we went into that game and it ended up. You know, in 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 one one. But draw. on paper, who were the better side? Of course, Nigeria will always be the better side. So if you get a, if you get a twelve nil win against a side like that of a local, not even not. See, you know why I said we don't celebrate such results. No disrespect to the scoreline, right? Mm. But we have two match cut off. The Cape Verde game, the Burkina Faso game never came. Now we have a Guinea match for today. Now, if you want to prepare, you should play with the best teams. Yeah. Sure. You're talking about the Nations Cup where we want to go to thank, win it to make the fourth time. And if you have a my point is, you don't say 12 nil. we can't celebrate, it's not enough. I'm not saying we should celebrate, I'm saying it's a good result. Why? Well, everybody knows because, that, because the team itself is actually preparing for a tournament. Okay. And it shows that we can actually score goals. Mm. All right. It's something, I mean, for every game, there's something to pick out. And this is, 12 nil is, That's is from the manager's see, perspective. so many teams, so many teams in this AFCON will not be this team 12 nil. Okay, that's a point as well. That's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So it shows that something is actually working. So let's see what they, they, what they come up with in the next game against Guinea. And then we we'll see how... It's, it's all about building up. And for me, I, I think it's a very good result. <laughs> yeah, it's just build up momentum. And um, if they can keep scoring like this, mm. of course, build up the confidence of the team going into... But I just want to wait for the game today. That's one okay. game Nigerian time. Then, you see, now, then I can see, you want yes. to wait for the game today? Yes. Why? Yeah, because... This is not really, doesn't establish that the team is ready. You yet. see my point. No? I, yeah. I never said the team it is ready. It just shows that okay, they are scoring goals against a local side. Hmm. Talking about the quality, you can't compare that to you Guinea. You don't want to do that. True. Yeah. So Guinea today will at least test them. Let's and see. And Guinea also is Guinea are involved. Can yeah. be Guinea, Cameroon, one group. Yeah, they, they are in the outcome as well. So it's going to be powerful power African football. I want to see what they can do. And of course, the goalkeeper. My eyes are on the goalkeeping department. Sound like it's a test yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You want to say something? Yeah, about? My, my argument is is uh, simple. I'm not saying this team is a super team. Right. Right. I'm simply saying that 
it shows something is working. Can you beat your chest that this guinea team that we're about to play today will beat this team 12 nil? It's football. It's football. Anything can happen. Yes. Now. So something is working. We didn't consider the goal. Something is working. Yeah. Let's see the guinea game, like he said. Clean True. Sheet. But I'm not going to say this is nothing. No, it's it is something because it shows that you know whatever it is the coach said worked. Okay, so away from that, Afcon 2023 Super Eagles reveal squad numbers. Uh, the Super Eagles squad number for the 23 African Cup of Nation has been released. Napoli hitman Victor Osime retained his number nine shirt, underlining his role as a team most important forward. Yeah, uh, Joe Aribo will don the iconic number 10 jersey. So much responsibility, if you ask me. Mm. Uh, Captain Ahmed Musa opted to stick with his famous number seven jersey. Uh, new boy Al Hassan Yusuf will wear number four. Jesse, uh, previously won by Wilfred in the D, the man he replaced in the squad. Mm. Uh, midfielder Alexi Wobi has switched from number 18 to 17, while Samuel Chukwese kept his number 11 shirt. Uh, Jesse Pesuero's side will be competing at the African finals for the 20th time. Mm. Uh, the Squiggles are drawn in Group A with host Cote d'Ivoire with Victoria Guinea. All right. That's a, quite a very, very right. interesting group. Right. Yes, sincerely, looking at the group, the Group A, we are going to be playing, uh, you know, come that's on the 14th. Now, let's get on the very, very group now. Do we have what it takes to come off this group? We'll talk about that. Now, the Jesse numbers, I recall I was saying that off air uh, with Ike Chuku, and you told me it doesn't really matter. Now, this is one of the first time in a long time looking at this, and then I've seen a number from 1 to 25. Everybody's got a number. There's no skip of number. Now, looking at this Jesse numbers, uh, let's talk about one man with well, number, a very big number, Yusuf Al Hassan. The Royal Antwerp midfielder will be wearing number four jersey, been replacing uh, that, you know, big play I'll talk about Leicester City, uh, we fed and Didi. Jerry, yeah. number four jersey. Uh, how would this young man come into the step up to this year? You know, I already see a, a situation where there's a vacuum in that team. You already. see already? Yeah, ahead of vacuum. time. There's a vacuum already in that team. Okay. We fed and Didi is big. big as name. far as the Super Eagles is concerned. Of course, captain potential. Yeah, well. leadership quality. Leadership quality. He brings a lot of. Um, a lot to the midfield of that team, mm -hmm. and him missing out in that team. Who else are they going to rely on? Is it the likes of uh, Frank Oyeka, who has flattered to deceive? As far <laughs> as I'm concerned, Frank Oyeka shouldn't be getting invitation anymore because really? he has been given countless of chances to prove himself, right. and he has not taken it with both hands. It means that he feels that he can walk into the Super League anytime, mm. anytime, because he plays in the English Premier League. But that should not be the case. And I think a warning signal already to the Super League. For Alassane, a lot to do for him because right. it's too, it's pretty too early to go to the Nations Cup and have such kind of responsibility. It puts a lot of pressure on the player. And if the coaching crew doesn't get it right, you will have a player who will be so scared not to make mistakes and mm. at the end of the day will be making mistakes to the detriment of the performance of whatever the Super Eagles is bringing to the table. Right. And if that happens, that means no matter how better the team is if there's a vacuum as much as the number four position which is the holding midfield mm. because that shifts the defense from it's lot a of pressure one, right if they don't get that right we're going to have a situation where we're just relying on the flanks and try to avoid the midfield and any good team that wants to win the championship needs a working midfield and i wish alasan all the best which i saw him he's going to go in the FA championship yeah i did see season. that as well right and of course they beat barcelona this mm -hmm. season as well but is that a yardstick? And of course, they are not even topping the, 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 the Belgian league right. out there. So, a lot of responsibility to him. So, it now falls on players like Frank Oyeka if he's ready to Do you step see up. how Hassan is still getting a start? He, he might not get a start. It might be Frank Oyeka who eventually okay. might start in that four position. But I don't have confidence in that man. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. so you heard us talk about Al Hassan Yusuf, the man that plays for Royal Antwerp. Uh, he's a very great player, but I don't know how this will work out regarding the fact that. Joseph Pesero, the manager of the Nigerian Super Eagle side, dropped him from the 41-man provisional squad. But when the lesser midfielder, we found that he got injured, we had to look back to the drum board and had to call him back to the team. Al Hassan Yusuf and the team, what do you think about him? Do you see any pressure starting, getting the start of the national team? I, I think it's an opportunity for him to actually prove a point. Oh, okay. you know, uh, sometimes, you know, we never can know until something like this happens. I mean, there's no way we can we could have dropped the weapon in Didi for her and you so. Right. But it's happened. Exactly. Now let's go into the Nations Cup and see. Before I remember in 2013 Nations Cup, you know, when after our first game, mm. you know, our defense was it was a, a mess. Yeah, it was a shambles. And then people were like, How are we going to do it? And then the coach looked, oh, you know what? Obama and, 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 and uh Omero. We were like, yeah. can they play? When they they face drug back, we were like, ah. Oh. And it worked. And it worked. Right. You know, this guy might just come in. The first game, he might struggle. 
and then click. And then you see a very powerful period like we saw in 2013 where um, Onazi, um, Sunday Bam, Mikel became, you know, like, 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 like a diamond. Right. And so he might just come into the, into the fray and play the first game. It might not be great, but then it might just be someone who did will come back and start sweating to get back his shirt. Is that possible? Yeah, that depends on the quality of the manager we're talking about. Oh, he takes Steven, back to Pesero. Steven Keshi is a man who knows his onions mm. because he had the partnership of great other players, ex-internationals who were backing him or yeah, making sure that he got it right. Line. When uh, Sonuba, when he wanted to take Sonuba to the Nations Cup, I remember the pressure the NFF put on him that he should drop Sonuba. Mm. He refused and said that if you don't want the players and bring in, then I have no business being at the AFCON. Take a look at a lot of players from the local league. We are mm. that, but we in that in that team. Mm. And look at Yosef Pesoro. There is already danger. Yosef Pesoro is a yes man. He's, a yes He's man. already obeying the NFF in selected players. What, what how is do Ahmed, you know? How do you what know? is Ahmed Musa doing Wait, in that why team? Do, why do you say? How and do you say? It's not only yes that Ahmed Musa is in that team. He's wearing the number seven jersey. That's the reverend jersey. He's retaining the jersey now. Retaining the jersey to sit on the bench and well, add no value I mean, to see, the team. I mean, let's look. Let's let's be realistic, right? Let's talk about this the way it needs to be. We've seen national teams come to play football. We've seen teams keeping number for some, some players. We see that a lot of times. Now, I met Musa wearing the number seven jersey. I never had a problem when I saw it. My point was, why was in the team? And I looked at the squad line and I looked at the player and I said, okay, let's, let's make do what we have. Now, I met Musa might not be bringing a lot, like you want to say. He's not bringing but anything. But let me say, to what the about the leadership? We don't want to talk about the leadership quality. That what he leadership means. quality is not Ahmed the first Musa man we've seen. He is not the first man we've seen. I mean, Musa is more or less a gentleman. I don't see leadership quality. You wouldn't. I mean, I don't know what you wouldn't. The know. only leadership quality he brings is when the players see him, they say, "Senior man, hi, hi." That's <laughs> it. That's it. When the coach right. wants to pass across the message, or maybe calm the boys. Maybe there's a protest. Is that, is that not angry. enough in the back rooms for the back? Room? Is, is that what it takes to win championship? Because the Super Eagles is a, is, a, is, is we, have, we have a lot of young players who mm. need to learn. Who, what's I mean, this, man, this, man has, this man has been here before. Yeah, he has been here he's before. One, he's one of the four. No, we should move past that. Mm. We are trying to bring the lives of Victor Simeon to step up. Right. Victor Simeon, because to see someone like Ahmed Musa, it would be like there's still time okay, so. for me to prove myself. <laughs> oh, oh. We still have four more Nations Cup to prove myself. Since Ahmed Musa is still coming to the Nations Cup, even at his 40s. That, that is okay. really sad. All right, that's his opinion. That's Jerry uh, being optimistic that Ahmed Musa should not make that score. But let's quickly let you know, like a run show, about the Jesse number, the way it unfolds. Francis Ogo, number one. Malayana, number two, Jesse, Seydou and Sanusi. And number three, Jesse, Al Hassan Yusuf, number four, William Truth Ekong, number five. Simi Ajayi, where's the number six, Jesse, Ahmed Musa retains his number seven, Jesse. Why, you know, Jerry is not happy with that very one. And also, Frank Banyaka, number eight, Victor Simi, number nine, Jesse, Joe Arriba, number ten, iconic one, uh, Samuel Chukweze, number 11, Brandon Samuel Osayi, uh, Bryce Osayi, Samuel, number 12. Uh, Bruno Yemechi, number 10, and Kalechi Hanan Chow, number 14, joining the team today. And also, Moses Simon, number 15, Nojo Aron Lake, number 16, Alex Wobi, number 17. 18, Jesse will be Ademo La Luke, man. Why number 19 will be Omar Sadiq. Number 20 will be Shido Zima Wazim, 21, Kevin Basti, Kenneth Omera, number 22. Stanley Wambali, number 23, Victor Banner, face 24. And then Rafael Onyedika, number 25. And that's just how it is. It's uh, not like a updates. roll call. Like a roll call? Yes. Number one call, number two, take just 1 to 25 and everybody's okay you know it's all good it's just numbers but at the end of the day let's see what they'll bring to the table That's so we, ha we have a message about the the, the nff monitor the five thousand dollar i'll be giving out to this player and that's not just what it is this money part of it let's talk about the money aspect of it we've seen Pesero talked about being old we've seen the players i don't want to call him a quote a lot of players have come to say we are not getting our pay at the right time would this be a problem we have, are we going to hear stories about this again this time around, I, there, there's no way you're going to have you know a football nation or a football team without um, a, a football team that plays very well with without having a stable a stable economy. Mm. You know, it's it's when it comes to when it comes to um, football in Africa and South America, like I like I said before, it's actually a thing of of let's survive poverty. Mm. So the players are most times fixated on you know what is coming in right. for them, and in, most of them are not even doing this because most of, most of them are not even doing this because they, you know they want to make a name now at this point. They just want to escape poverty, and that's exactly one of the major problems that you know we are having in Africa. Right. And of course, that same problem is what mm. is they are facing in South America too. So yes, are we going to have this kind of um, um, drama? Yeah, I think at, at this point Nigerians are used to this mm. sort of 
thing coming up, whether the F Super Falcons are playing, the Flamingos or the Super Eagles. It's not it's normal. I mean we saw what happened at the Olympic where where Mikel, you know, had to, you know, you know, you know part way right. with some of his money and of course how they, they started having issues because of the money that was mm -hmm. given to them. We, this thing dates back to 2002 when you know Nigeria qualified for the World Cup and uh, Olise and the then Minister of Sport and all of that. This is this is part of you know mm. the issue. Until we have a stable you know uh, uh, economy or right. we have a a, a a a way where we can actually separate football mm. and economy of football from you know national politics, then we will continue to have this issue. Okay, I, I don't, in as much as I want to talk about that, but let's go on. Uh, to this one, Gennett Raw, former manager, who for me, I still feel I don't like the way he was sacked. I will say that again, anytime, anywhere, quote me anywhere. Gennett Raw has come to take Victor Boniface, Victor Osime, most importantly, saying they have what it takes to get us out there. Now, let's talk about Gennett Raw, the former manager. Benna Republic, that's the manager of Benna Republic, and he was fired. Now, working with Benna, he was with us before, he almost got us to the Nations Cup. He, he was, he, they, they gave him the green, I mean, the red card, right? And he left and we brought in Equavon. We got off in the Nations Cup the last time he came along. We didn't have a good start, I mm -hmm. remember. Let's talk about getting a trial with Tipping Osime to do well in the Nations Cup. Okay. Yeah, even, even the blind man uh, will know that with what they have been hearing about mm -hmm. Osime, that he will surely bring a lot to the table as far as uh, the championship is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, Victor Simeon is the current African footballer of the year. Okay. What that means that he's number one in Africa right now. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was the highest goal scorer in the Italian Serie last season. He won the Scudetto. Of course, all that, of this all accolades of this, we know. All of these in, already point out, unless maybe you don't know anything about sports, okay. you've never heard anything about football mm -hmm. before, then you will not tip someone like Victor Simeon to lift the Super Eagles. If the Super Eagles is to do well, Victor Simeon will have to score the goals. Victor Simeon will have to shine, mm. as well as Boniface. And of course, the two double Vs, if you want to put it that way. Right. Victor, Victor, making sure that he gives us the goals. If Victor Boniface is able to get his rhythm, he's a very, very strong, agile striker. Right. And of course, we have two strikers who are very strong, mm. who can bully defenders, who can, of course, have their way. If they have their way, definitely, the Super Eagles should okay. be doing well. So the Super Eagles, are we going to see a Pesero have to pair of this Victor Boniface and Osime? I want to take on that. No, that, that's the problem, you know, um, the both of them are almost like for like strikers. Yes, traditional uh, uh, Yes, and they are both um, not very skillful. They are not the kind of player you can bank on when it comes to creativity exactly. to, to, to create chances. Not so just to play as an opposition block. Unlike the, the, the era when we have, you know, um, a, a, an Ekweba and uh, a Kanu Wanko, right. you know, uh, players like that who are actually very, very creative. creative they might well. not be able to really get the more goals, but mm -hmm. of course, you know that the other one is, yeah. is quite deadly and very sharp. Mm -hmm. But now these guys are like for life striker, but that's not really the point because we, you can have both um, like for life strikers and then still get the result. But the problem here is that how much or how well can we bank on the people that will be supplying them? Oh. Now, if you cut off their supply, they will be almost useless. Okay. Because they do not have the ability to really create. And that's a problem. And that's why players, attackers who can actually, uh, if you look, watch what Pep, Pep Guardiola, he likes his attackers to really drop in the middle to, to, to be part of play. And that's why when you, when you go into a team like that, I, I don't know if Nigeria will be playing the traditional 4-4-2. Okay. And if we're playing the traditional 4-4-2, that means we need someone who, you know, one of them should be dropped in the bench and then perhaps play the other one with Ihe Nacho, who is a little more skillful. Mm. Or push Chukweze down in the middle and then play on that person on the flank. But if you play the both of them, how much can we bank on, on Frank Oyeka and Joe Eribo, who are most likely the ones that will start right at the middle of the park? We had JJ and, and other um, Mikel Obian in there. There's, these guys can actually supply Moses, Victor Moses and the like. They did well in 2013 AFCON. Do we have this kind of players in the middle? Because the, when we play big teams like mm -hmm. that, when we play teams that are you know, at a level at the AFCON, this is what will matter. Okay. Once they close us up in the midfield, midfield, what are we going to do? Okay. Well, what about Moses, Simon, and Chukwese? The That's it. They, they might be playing from the wing. Yes. I'm talking about those who are at the middle. Okay. At least uh, we don't have Karaskila, like I told you already. But okay, let's 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 <laughs> go. Off that. Let's go off that one quickly on the show. Now uh, we have to go on a very very quick break. When we return, the show continues. We we'll let you know more on the Sports Republic. We've got a lot installed. The Mark Vastabai news, also Rafael Nadal in the news. Coco Golf also in the news and the Asian Cup AFCON 23 talks continue. Stay with us, stay with VOP TV, stay with Sports Republic. We'll be back shortly.
All right, great to have you join us back. Welcome to the Sports Republic show right here on Voice of the People uh, TV. Yeah, okay, so much to talk about. And uh, let's just go straight to what's happening in Europe. And, uh, of course, we know the FA Cup. Mm. Uh, Liverpool knocking out uh, Arsenal of that one. And, of course, Liverpool struck twice late on to beat Arsenal at Emirates Stadium and reach the FA Cup fourth round. And, of course, Arsenal paid the price for missing a host of opportunities and were punished as Liverpool grew increasingly dangerous. Mm. Uh, the deadlock broken when Trent Alexander-Arnold's uh, free kick glanced in off Jacob Kyrgios' uh, head with seven minutes left. And Liverpool's trial was completed uh, in the com closing seconds as a little break ended with uh, Luis Diaz firing on an emphatic uh, finish high past uh, Arsenal goal player on Ramsdale. And of course, they say the rest is history. Goodbye, Arsenal, as far as uh, the FA Cup is concerned and uh, it, it's, I don't know what's happening to Arsenal this season. Mm. I don't know. It seems sometimes they prove that something's going to happen. At the end of the tunnel, there's no light. Everything is just going up and the elephant is not really looking for I, I, think, I think my point for Arsenal, I think my point for the team entirely is I, I, don't, see, I don't see a team wanting to compete. Mm. I don't see that urgency. I don't see that desire. I don't, I don't, I don't see Arsenal's side knowing that everything is at stake. Look at how far they were in the last season. Everybody knew that, okay, yeah. Do you know what I say to people? I say to people at times, I say, can Arsenal win the league? And they say to me, no matter what, Arsenal will not win the league again. And I'd be like, okay, why? Now, it's not far-fetched to talk about Arsenal. Like I said before in the start of the time, I said, and I will say again, I see a sign of a team that don't know what to play for. Now, the manager, yesterday when I saw this James, I was well impressed in starting off with James. A whole lot of people begin to say, why not trust up? And now it's an FA Cup. They are the champions of the FA Cup. Now you're playing against a side that has the Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunes, Mark Kalista in the middle of the park, all of these players. What do you need to do? Now, Kirio goal on goal was a mistake. No disrespect to that. That was a, a mistake. But I don't see, an, they, they're not clinic on the front of goals. They need to understand that everything is at stake. They need to start knowing, taking chances. Okay, how about feel so relaxed as if it's not a die, a do or die game. You know, when you walk, Saka for me was one of the worst players yesterday. And I felt like the manager need to go. It's one of those things to say, you needed to take a Risaka on the game. If you want to bring a Trossard, maybe bring a Trossard. You could switch and Riz Nelson to the other side because Riz Nelson was still in the game. But you took him off, you left the Saka. We know how big Saka can be. But that, for me, it doesn't really give us another edge. Yeah, if you take a look at the issue of Saka, I think Saka has become untouchable exactly. in that team. And when you make a player too comfortable, these are the things that happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Mikel Ateta, what's the way forward? Because now they're out of the FC Cup. They already, their fans are already saying Champions League, the Premier League is still up for grabs. Do you think they still have a chance in those competitions? Well, um, if, you, if you've been following <laughs> Arsenal for years, you understand that uh, even in the days of um, Arsene Wenger, you know that November and early months of um, the year, precisely February, mm. that's when their, their season comes to an end. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm quite surprised that they, they actually lost this game because right. I was expecting them to end their season in February as mm -hmm. usual. But then the problem is this, um, I've talked about this Arsenal team before, and the problem, the major problem Arsenal has, mm. forget any other thing, is Saka and Martinelli. Okay. Till the day Arsenal find two good players yeah. that will give those guys, put those guys on their toes, Arsenal will not get them. But is that enough reason when, even when the manager, when the, they are not doing right? No, that's, that's the thing, right? If the manager can bring in some two good players that will put them in under their pressure. place. Yes, under, under pressure. Mm. They'll get the best out of every other player. Because every other player see these guys as, you know, the defining, the, the guys that can actually bring out, you know, that magic moment for them. Now, and that's the major problem Arsenal has. Mm. And they've been having, you know, for, for, for the past two or three seasons. All right. Look at Liverpool they played against. Mm. No Van Dijk, no Mo Salah. Yeah. I mean, these are the two fear factors Liverpool have. Mm. But nothing. You have the, your, your best legs. And this Arsenal side can actually play any team in the league. But that's... All right. Uh, it, it's pretty interesting. I, of course, wish Arsenal and your fans all the best. Uh, to, to, to their own detriment, things mm. are not really going their way. And of course, a total of eight FA Cup and 10 round replays uh, will be up. And uh, meaning that a lot of replays for some Premier League side. And mm. of course, not too good for them because they will not have the winter break to, right. to celebrate. And uh, we would have loved to go on and on. Mm -hmm. So much to talk about in the side where the score of course Mbappe also scored a hat trick right. uh, yesterday for Paris Saint German mm -hmm. and um, boxing we know that Joshua is eventually going to fight in Ghana. That's a very big one. Do you think I he can't has wait, I'm chance? craving I'm craving to see that. Yes. I'm actually craving to see that. We would have loved to talk more about our time is yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah definitely that's much uh, we can take. 
on uh, Sport Republic. We want to say thanks uh, for being a part of the show. Thank you very much for having me. All right. And All right. So well, the Sport Republic show comes your way again tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. We'll run the show for you. We'll be here, myself and Jerry. And also a uh, very, very maximum thank you to you, Ikechiku Johnson, for making it a uh, day with us. I hope to have you some other time on the show. Uh, from me, I'm signing out. My name is Kizzy Cake. Thank you so much for sticking around with the Sports Republic. Keep watching VOP TV. It's no longer news that the 